Bartonella Buddies, today we're talking about symptoms of Bartonellosis. Most people have never heard of Bartonella, and most physicians have only heard of a few strains. Bartonella hensley is the strain of the bacteria that causes cat scratch disease or fever. Cat scratch fever. Cat scratch fever. If you listen to the lyrics of that song, I don't think he's talking about Bartonella. The reason it is called cat scratch disease is because it can be transmitted through a cat scratch or bite. It can also be transmitted through other vectors like fleas. Cat scratch disease is typically characterized by swollen lymph nodes, fever, and a bump or blister at the site of infection. It is described as a self-limiting disease which resolves within weeks or months. The other two well-known strains of Bartonella are Bartonella quintana and Bartonella bacilliformis, which cause trench fever and Carrion's disease respectively. Fun fact, it's called Carrion's disease because a med student named Daniel Carrion inoculated himself with the Bartonella and then died. Isn't that so cool? I want something named after me. And while these are the disease manifestations that physicians are familiar with, relatively recent research shows that Bartonella can cause a chronic relapsing bacteremia and a vast array of chronic symptoms that can range from mild to debilitating. Because physicians have been taught that cat scratch disease is self-limiting, researchers are moving away from this term and towards the more inclusive term, Bartonellosis. I know that in previous videos I say I have Bartonella, but technically I have Bartonellosis. So I'm gonna make the switch over to saying I have Bartonellosis, but I'm keeping the name Bartonella babe because it has a much better ring to it than Bartonellosis babe, duh. Some people with Bartonellosis have a few subclinical mild symptoms. Some people have a lot of mild symptoms. Some people have a few really bad symptoms like me, and some people have a lot of really bad symptoms. And while Bartonella has been shown to cause life-threatening illnesses such as endocarditis, today I wanna to focus on the chronic pain in the ass symptoms, sometimes literally, right now I'm sitting on a heating pad, that for most people prior to getting a diagnosis are mysterious and scary. I wanna focus on these symptoms because people with these symptoms are often misdiagnosed and or go undiagnosed for many months to years. And B, some of these symptoms are not visible, nor can they be proven with tests and are sometimes labeled as psychosomatic. Research on human Bartonella infections over the past 15 years or so shows that that bacteria can cause a variety of rheumatological, neurological, psychiatric, ocular, and nonspecific symptoms such as fatigue and headaches. And instead of just listing every single symptom that Bartonella can cause, which is nearly innumerable, I thought it would be more persuasive if I did a mini overview of what the scientific literature says. One of the main goals of this channel is to have Bartonella recognized by scientists, doctors, and the general public as a major contributor to chronic debilitating disease. Maybe you'd want to send this to one of your doctors who doesn't believe you, yet. I always put a few links to journal articles in the video description down below, but for this video, I'm going to put the link to every journal article I reference so you can evaluate the literature yourself. I have done my best to select high quality research, because remember, just because you found it on PubMed doesn't mean it's good research. So let's start with rheumatological symptoms. In 2005, scientists in Israel studied 841 laboratory confirmed cases of cat scratch disease, link number one down below. 2.9% of these patients went on to develop rheumatoid factor negative arthropathy that was often disabling. Although this is a small percentage, 69 patients were excluded from the study that had poorly defined musculoskeletal complaints. Then, using the same data, a 2007 study, link number two, published in the journal Clinical Infectious Diseases, found that 10% of people with laboratory-confirmed cat scratch disease went on to develop musculoskeletal manifestations, including myalgia, arthritis, arthralgia, tendonitis, osteomyelitis, and neuralgia. Whew. Although most patients recovered from these symptoms, 6% developed a chronic condition. Now the next study, link three, was the first study I found where I went, OMG, and flashing lights went off saying, maybe I have Bartonellosis. This study was published in Emerging Infectious Diseases, an open access journal published by the CDC. In 2012, a rheumatologist examined 296 patients for Bartonella. These patients were diagnosed with things like Lyme disease and fibromyalgia. And I was like, hey, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but maybe I was misdiagnosed and I actually have Bartonella. Osis, Bartonellosis. So these patients were tested with IFA serology and ePCR. Even though serology cannot definitively indicate whether an infection is active, 62.5% of the patients were seroreactive to Bartonella antigens, which was a huge finding. 
What was even huger was that 41% of these patients were found to be bacteremic with Bartonella through ePCR. This means that they found Bartonella bacteria in the blood of 41% of these patients. Wowzer! For more on rheumatological symptoms, see articles 4 and 5 down below. In another study published in Emerging Infectious Diseases, Bartonella was detected by ePCR in the blood of 14 people with occupational animal contact, like veterinarians. The most common symptoms these people reported were fatigue, myalgia, and arthralgia, as well as headache, memory loss, ataxia, and paresthesia, which brings me to my next category, neurological symptoms. A 2008 study documented Bartonella bacteremia in six patients with frequent animal exposure or recent arthropod exposure. These patients suffered from a variety of neurological and neurocognitive symptoms, including seizures, disorientation, migraines, paresis, and tremors. One of the patients, a veterinarian, was previously diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and his symptoms progressed to the point where he could not walk unaided. After antibiotic therapy, the patient returned to his work as a veterinary surgeon. Link number eight is a great article that reviews case reports and studies from 2005 to 2012 of patients with neurological symptoms from Bartonellosis. Now on to psychiatric symptoms. In 1991, emergency room doctors documented a case of a 27-year-old male who exhibited violent behavior and confusion. At first, the doctors presumed that this behavior was due to drug abuse. However, the doctors later determined that the true cause of his combative behavior was due to acute encephalitis brought on by cat scratch disease. Full disclosure, I only read the abstract of this article because that's all that was available to me online, but ideally when you're doing research, you want to be able to read the whole article. In 2011, Link 10, an 18-year-old female experienced depression, anxiety, mood swings, muscle spasms, the inability to extend her fingers due to stiffness, and decreased peripheral vision. She also experienced dissociative episodes and visual and auditory hallucinations that got more frequent and severe over time terrifying. She was found to be bacteremic with Bartonella cholerae. After antibiotic therapy, the patient's hallucinations ceased, and her other symptoms returned to her pre-infection baseline. Finally, I want to address ocular manifestations of Bartonellosis. In a 2011 study, Link 11, scientists in a 2011 study, Link 11, published in Clinical Ophthalmology, scientists studied eight patients with ocular Bartonellosis. The most common eye abnormality was uveitis, followed by several other very serious itises. Uveitis is inflammation of the uvea, which is the middle layer of the eye wall, and it can cause redness of the eye, light sensitivity, pain, and floaters. One patient had neuroretinitis, which is inflammation of the optic nerve head, which can cause one to see odd shapes and colors, and can cause sudden and complete vision loss, also terrifying. Interestingly, most of these patients did not present with typical cat scratch disease. This study has a great literature review, and a literature review is a summary of pertinent scientific journal articles. You can also visit Link 12 for a blog post from Galaxy Diagnostics for more information on how Bartonella can affect the eye. High quality research on human Bartonellosis has been mounting, but unfortunately has not yet reached a critical mass to where the mainstream medical community recognizes Bartonella as a contributing factor to chronic debilitating disease. The practice of medicine is slow to adopt new practices and lags behind the research arena. The deal is we still need more research to move the needle and this is where you can help. Many of the articles I have referenced today have been published by Dr. Breitschwer and his colleagues at North Carolina State University College of Veterinary Medicine. Without the research by Dr. Breitschwer and his team, I very well may not have a diagnosis and be getting the treatment that I need to get my life back. Dr. Breitschwert's Bartonella Project is seeking funding to study modes of transmission to humans, to improve diagnostic testing, and to define optimal treatment. Right now, they are working to determine the frequency of Bartonella infections in people with neuropsychiatric symptoms. Please visit the link at the top of my video description under Donate Here. That link will take you to a page where you can donate to the Bartonella slash Vector Born Disease Research Fund. You can choose to give a one-time gift or a sustaining gift. On the bottom of the next page in the field Other Gift Comments, please indicate that you were referred by me by typing Referred by Bartonella Babe or Referred by Jake Picker. This way I can track how effective my fundraising efforts are. Please give as generously as you can to help those of us seriously affected by this devastating disease. Thank you for watching and donating from the bottom of my heart. No, seriously, donate. Cough it up like a cat coughs up hairballs.
<laughs> People with these symptoms are often misdiagnosed. Misdiagnosed? Missed. Psh, psh. Missed. Diagnose. <laughs> Miss. Diagnose. <laughs>